Assalamualaikum and greeting to all of you. So today we will continue our lecture on physical geology in week 3 which is about the earth interiors and plates tectonic. So for today's topic we will address our CLO number 1 which is to explain the formations of the earth, its place in the solar system and its interior structure. Particularly on the formations of the earth and also its interior structure. And by the end of this lecture, uh, students should be able to discuss in terms of number one, theory of plate tectonics, number two, convergence, divergence, and transform plate boundaries, and lastly, about the earthquake and also volcanisms associations. Okay, we go with the earth interior first. The compositional layers of the earth are the three main layers that the earth is divided into based on their chemical compositions. So these layers are the crust, mantle and core. I believe you already have a prior knowledge about these uh, things before. Uh, let's take a look on the crust. So the crust uh, is the outermost layer of the earth and is the thinnest layer ranging in the thickness from uh, 3 to 70 km. So the crust is made up of rocks that are rich in silica and also aluminium and is also layer of the earth that we live on. Mantles in general uh, is the middle layer of the earth and is the thickest layer ranging in thickness from uh, 2900 to uh, 6370 kilometers. So this mantle uh, made up of uh, rocks that are rich in iron and magnesium and is very hot and dense and the mantles uh, flow uh, slowly over time which uh, drive the movement of the plate tectonic. And we also have uh, the core. So the core is the innermost layer of the earth and is the densest layer. So the core is made up of, the, of mostly iron and uh, nickel and it is divided into two parts, the outer core and also the inner core. As you know, the outer core is liquid while the inner core is solid. And the density and the compositions of the crust, so the density and the composition of the crust are uh, varying depending on whether it is continental crust or oceanic crust. So continental crust is thicker and less dense than the oceanic crust. So this is because con continental crust is made up of uh, older, uh, more weathered rocks, while oceanic crust is made up of younger and more mafic rocks. And then we also have uh, in terms of density and the compositions of the mantle. So the density and compositions of the mantle also uh, vary with depth and, and the uppermost uh, mantle is less dense and more fluid than the lower mantles, which is a bit solid. So this is because the pressure and the temperature increase with depth, which causes the rocks to become more dense and less fluid. And about uh, the density and the compositions of the core, the outer core is uh, liquid because the temperature is high enough to melt. Uh, the ions and the nickel and the inner core is solid because the pressure is too high that is compresses uh, the ions and nickel into a uh, solid form the compositional layers of the earth are important for a number of reasons they helps us to understand the structure and the compositions of the earth and they also help us to understand how the earth has developed uh, evolved over time for example the movement of the tectonic plate is driven by the flow of the mantles and the earth's magnetic fields uh, generated by the movement of the liquid ions in the outer core. So we are still in the earth's interior. So the diagrams on the left uh, shows the layer of uh, atmosphere including exosphere, thermosphere, uh, mesosphere, stratosphere and also troposphere. And at the same time, we will also we look into a little bit on the layer of crust of the Earth, like lithosphere and also asthenosphere. So let's take a look on the exosphere. Exosphere means that the uh, outermost uh, layer of the Earth. Exo means ex uh, outside. So it extends from about uh, 600 km to 10,000 km above the Earth. So in this layer, uh, atoms and molecules um, escape into space and this is where the regions of satellite orbiting the Earth. So at the bottom of the uh, exosphere is a transition layer called the thermopause. Next layer which is uh, the thermosphere. So the thermosphere is the layer of the Earth's uh, atmosphere above the mesosphere and also below the exosphere. 
so it extends about uh, around 85 km to 600 km above the Earth's surface. So the thermosphere is very very hot with a temperature uh, reaching up to 2000 degrees Celsius. So this is because the thermosphere absorbs ultraviolet radiations from the sun and sometimes create aurora uh, <clears throat> in this layer, as especially at the north and also uh, south poles. So the high temperature indicates the amount of energy being absorbed by the molecules but with so few uh, molecules uh, in this layer the total number uh, would not uh, be enough to heat our skin actually so the bottom of the thermosphere is the mesopause so this is the transition layer into the mesosphere let's take a look on the mesosphere so mesosphere uh, is the third layer or, or we call it as a middle layer because meso means middle so uh, is located above a stratosphere and below the thermosphere so it extends from about 50 kilometers to 85 kilometers uh, above the earth surface so mesosphere is the uh, coldest layer of the earth's atmosphere with a temperature reaching as low as negative 90 degrees celsius most meteor occur in Earth's mesosphere. <clears throat> Even smaller meteor is uh, visible uh, because uh, how fast they travel and how brightly they shine. So the transitions uh, boundary which separate the mesosphere from the stratosphere, the layers of the atmosphere below, is called stratopause. <clears throat> so uh, stratosphere uh, extend from six to 20 km above the earth's surface to around 50 km. So this layer holds about uh, 90 degree of the atmosphere gases but very little water vapor. So in this region, uh, the temperature increases with uh, high and heat is produced uh, in, the, in the process of the formation of ozone and this heat responsible for temperatures uh, increases from an average of uh, negative 51 degrees uh, at uh, tropopause to a maximum about uh, negative 15 degrees uh, at the top of the stratosphere. So the transitions layer of the uh, bottom of the stratosphere is called the tropopause. Troposphere, uh, also known as uh, the lower uh, atmosphere, uh, almost all weather occur in this region. So the troposphere begin uh, at the Earth's surface, but uh, the height of troposphere is uh, varies. It is about uh, 18 to 20 km high at the equator in our region, for example in Malaysia, 9 km at 50 degree north and 50 degree south, and just under 6 km high at uh, both north and south pole. So as the density uh, of the gases in this layer decreases with high, the air becomes thinner. Therefore, the temperature in the troposphere also decreases with high. So as we go higher, the temperature is lowering down. As one climb higher, the temperatures drop from an average around uh, 70 degrees uh, to uh, negative 51 degrees Celsius at the tropopause. So now, now, now we move into the uh, crust layer. So we have two crust layer, lithosphere and asthenosphere. Let's take a look on the lithosphere first. So uh, lithosphere is the outermost layer of the Earth's solid surface. So, uh, it includes the uh, crust and the upper mantle. The crust and the upper mantle. So the lithosphere is divided uh, into a tectonic plate which are constantly moving because of the convection of uh, mantle and then uh, at the lower part we have a uh, asthenosphere so this asthenosphere is the layer of the earth's mantle below the lithosphere just slightly below so it is a layer of hot solid rocks that flows uh, slowly over time and the asthenosphere is responsible for the movement of the plate tectonics So before this, we talk about the tectonic plates okay, that related to the lithosphere and also asthenosphere. The question is, what are tectonic plates? So a tectonic plates is a plate that is large rigid slab of solid rock 
So tectonic, uh, tectonic plates basically a massive piece of the Earth's crust and uppermost mantle. As you know, they are made up of both uh, thin oceanic crust and also thicker continental crust. So uh, plates are formed from a uh, lithosphere, which are the crust and the upper, uh, uppermost part of the mantle. So as we discussed earlier, the lithosphere is the rigid outer layer of the Earth and it is made up of the crust and uppermost uh, mantle that divided tectonic plates. So uh, the plates float and uh, slowly following uh, asthenosphere. So the lower part of the mantle, meaning that the hot and solid rock uh, asthenosphere layer is responsible for the movement of the tectonic plates. And uh, the Mohorovic uh, discontinuity, or sometimes uh, in short we call it as Moho, is uh, the boundary between uh, the crust and also uh, the mantle. So it is a seismic discontinuity, which means that the seismic waves speed up when they cross it. So this is because the mantle is denser than the crust. And uh, tectonic plates are important because they play a vital role in shaping the Earth's surface and driving many of the geological processes that occur on Earth. So the movement of the tectonic plates is responsible for the formations of mountain, uh, volcanoes, uh, and also uh, the earthquake. It also plays a, a role in the formation of new oceans and the destructions of the old one. So <clears throat> now we move into the theory of plate tectonics. We have two continental drift hypothesis and also plate tectonic theory. So um, the continental drift hypothesis was proposed by uh, Alfred Wegener in the early uh, 20th century to explain the similarity between the coastline of South America and also uh, Africa, as well as the matching of rock type and fossils across the Atlantic Oceans. Wegener also noted that uh, fossils of tropical plants and animals had been found in Antarctica, which suggested that the continent had a warmer climate in the past. However, Wegener uh, was unable to provide a satisfactory explanation for how the continents could have drifted apart. Some scientists, geologists, criticized his hypothesis, uh, agreeing that it was not possible for the continental or continents to move over the dense mantle layer. And then we move into the uh, plate tectonic theory. So uh, the theory of plate tectonic was proposed uh, in the late of 1960s after geologists or scientists in general had gathered more evidence about the seafloor and driving force behind continental drift. So plate tectonic explains uh, that the lithosphere, the outermost layer of the earth, is broken into uh, plates that are constant motion. So the plates move on top of the asthenosphere, a layer of a molten rock that is less than uh, the lithosphere. So driving force behind plate tectonic is uh, convection current in the mantle. So we're going to go with the convection later on. Convection current are formed when hot material rises and cooler material sinks. So as the mantle's uh, materials move, it drags the plates along with it. So plate tectonic explains uh, the, the origins and distributions of volcanoes, uh, fault zones and also uh, mountain belts. And uh, volcano occur at plate boundaries where magma rises to the surface. Uh, fault zones occur uh, where plates are sliding past each other or moving apart. And mountain belts are formed when plates collide and push up uh, the crust. So there are about several evidence of plate tectonics and continental drift. But the most common are three. We go with number one first, which is the evidence of plate tectonic based on the remnants in rock. So remnants in rocks are features or material that are found in rock that are out of place. For example, glacier movement that leaves scar on the lands or marks also leaving uh, rock debris on the existing bedrocks. So marks on the bedrock shows where debris carried out by glacier uh, scrap the surface. So we can determine the directions of scrap because it leaves the, the scar on the bedrock and we can reconstruct the movement, uh, especially of the, uh, of the ice sheet and the continent that is uh, covered. For example, in South America, um, uh, Africa, India and Australia, glacial uh, directions trace uh, on the bedrock tell us 
uh, about uh, 300 million years ago ice sheet uh, spread that is believed uh, they were actually from one southern region of the supercontinent of Penja called Gondowana as shown in this uh, figure another example uh, uh, another example of the remnants in rock is they found uh, in the middle of continents may contain fossils or marine animals so this remnants uh, of rocks because of marine animal cannot live on the continents one example of remnants in rock uh, in the discovery of fossil uh, glossopteris tree in the antarctica south america africa india and uh, australia so glossopteris tree are known to have uh, lived in a warm climate so their presence in this continent uh, suggests that they were once connected so this is consistent with the theory of plate tectonics which uh, predict that the continents were once part of con supercontinent called Penja. So uh, next one is uh, in the middle is about the records in the uh, rocks which explain that the earth uh, continents were once joined in the single supercontinent uh, again called Penja. So Penja began to break apart about 200 million years ago and the continents have been drifting apart ever since. So this Penja uh, supercontinents uh, broke up into two supercontinents later which are Laurasia and also Gondwana and the picture here shows that the uh, the, the supercontinent uh, of uh, Gondwana <coughs> or also known as the southern supercontinents so the fossils of uh, plants and animals that are found in different continents uh, over here provides uh, evidence that the continents were once connected for example a uh, fossil of the freshwater reptiles known as Mesosaurus have been found in both uh, Africa and also this one uh, uh, and also South America. Uh, so Mesosaurus was uh, known as a freshwater swimmer. So it is unlikely that it could be have uh, crossed the Atlantic Oceans on its own. So this suggests that Africa and South America before this have been connected uh, once uh, at, at one time before. So uh, the fossils of the an uh, ancestral mammal like uh, uh, Lystrosaurus have been found in Africa and Madagascar and also India and uh, Antarctica. So this suggests that uh, all of these continents were once connected that they have been since drifted apart. So uh, these figures also shows that uh, the fossils of tropical plants and animals have been found in the Antarctica. So this suggests that the Antarctica had a, a much warmer climate in the past. So this is consistent with the theory of plate tectonic, which explains that uh, the Antarctica uh, was once uh, located near the uh, equator. <clears throat> so next we have a complementary coast. So Africa and South America, as shown here, uh, we can see that it can fit them uh, together like a puzzle where the continental edge of the Southern uh, South America and Western uh, Africa looks like a mirror image. So we can match them uh, like a puzzle uh, because we can fit them. And the evidence of the splitting uh, of these two continents is believed due to the mid-Atlantic uh, rich uh, divergent plate boundary. So the mid-Atlantic uh, ridge is a, a long underwater mountain ridge that runs through the center of the Atlantic Ocean. So if you open the Google map, you even can see that there is one straight line uh, that that is showing the mid-Atlantic uh, uh, mid ridge that uh, is in the Atlantic Ocean. So uh, overall, these are the evidence showing that the continents was once together as a supercontinent before they drifted apart due to uh, plate tectonic movement or we simply said as uh, continental drift. And the question is what drive plate tectonics? So the slow movement of hot softened mantles uh, below rigid plate is driving force ataupun driving mechanism behind this plate tectonics. So this movement is caused by the convection current, like here, uh, in the mantles. <clears throat> so the convection current are formed when hot material rises and cooler material sinks. So this mantle is made up of solid rock but is hot enough 
uh, to flow slowly. So the heat from the earth core uh, heat up the mantle, causing it to rise. So as the mantle rises, uh, it cools and become denser, and the denser mantle then sink back to the core. <clears throat> So this cycle of rising and sinking mantle create the convection currents. So the convection currents in the mantles drag the plates uh, along with them sometimes, most of the times. And the plates move over the external sphere. So a layer of molten rocks that is less than uh, the lithosphere. So the external sphere acts like uh, lubricants allowing the plates to move uh, smoothly. So there are about seven major plates uh, that we have, uh, which is the Antarctica, the blue regions, Africa, the orange region, Eurasia, the green regions, North America, uh, the brown region, South America, uh, with the purple regions, India, Australia, uh, light orange to uh, red regions, and Pacific uh, plates, uh, the yellow, the yellow regions. And we also do have minor plates like Arabian plates, okay, like uh, what else? Uh, Philippine Sea plate, uh, Scotia plate, and many more. So this major and minor plate is actually divided based on the plate boundaries that was created due to the uh, convections of the mantle that we have discussed earlier. And there are different type of plate boundaries that we will discuss later in this lecture. But before that, let's take a look on the movement of the plate uh, over time. So the animation uh, shows how the plates were moved or drifted from 215 million years ago, which is in the Permian area uh, from a supercontinental uh, known as Pangea and break apart into two supercontinents uh, known as Laurasia uh, on the northern part and the Gondwana on the southern part. So the drift keeps happening during a uh, Mesozoic Aeon, which is a uh, Triassic, Jurassic, Cretaceous, and until what we have in the present days uh, of all seven major uh, continent, uh, continents. So we need to understand that the movement or the drift takes about million of years. So we need to imagine that uh, the movement of drift is not as fast as shown in the uh, animations. So it ranges from a small millimeter shifting to few centimeter uh, drifting over years uh, depends on the locations of the plate boundaries. So now we are going to talk about uh, the three different plate boundaries. So as you know, a plate boundary is the lines where the two tectonic uh, plates meet or split. So the three different uh, plate boundaries are number one, divergence then convergence, then we have transform. So these three uh, different split boundaries can be described uh, based on the directions of stress uh, created by the convections of the mantle. And it is important to note that uh, the plate movement happens on the lithosphere layer and the external sphere layer, which is responsible to be the mechanisms to create the drifting effect uh, created by the convections of the solid mantle layers. So now we move into the first uh, type of plate boundary, which is known as divergent. So divergent plate boundaries are places where two tectonic plates are moving away from each other. As the plate uh, move apart, magma rises from the mantle to fill up the gap. And the magma cools and solidifies, forming new lithosphere, crust and upper mantle. So divergent plate uh, boundaries are typically expressed as mid-ocean ridge which are long underwater mountain range that runs through the middle uh, of the oceans. So mid-Atlantic ridge is the longest mid-oceanic ridge in the world as shown in this line. So divergent plate boundaries are important for a number of reasons. They are the place where the new crust is generated as we discussed earlier and they play a role in regulating the Earth's climate actually. Divergent plate boundaries are also associated with a variety of geological hazards uh, such as uh, earthquake and volcanic eruptions. And here are the some examples of divergent plate boundaries. Uh, a part of uh, mid-Atlantic ridge, we also have East Pacific uh, rise, 
uh, Carlsberg Ridge, uh, Great Rift Valley, Red Sea Ridge and Gulf of Aden. And let's take a look on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge that occur at uh, Atlantic Ocean. From uh, any geograph geographical application software or even Google Map, we can actually identify the divergence lines of mid-oceanic ridge that splits uh, between these two continents of South America and Africa. So previously, uh, they are in one combined uh, continent before they split apart due to the uh, divergence process. Moving to the next uh, type of plate boundaries, which is convergent. So convergent plate boundaries are places where two tectonic plates are moving towards each other. So different with the divergent, which is away from each other, this one is towards each other. So when two plates collide, one plate may slide underneath the other in a process called subductions. So the collisions line or subduction line is called trench or, or deep ocean trench when it's situated in the sea, which is also visible from satellite image. The subducting plate sinks into the mantle and is melted and then re uh, recycles. So the materials, uh, the, the, the melted materials um, may rise to the surface and also form volcano as shown uh, over here. So when two plates collide, the crust may crumple up and uh, form a volcanic mountain or maybe the, just a mountain range. So an illustration of convergent boundary can be observed at the uh, Sumatra island. By examining satellite imagery, we can identify a deep ocean trench in this region. So this trench is formed as, uh, uh, as the Pacific Oceanic Plate on the right uh, side is pushed beneath the uh, Sumatra Continental Plate. So these geological interactions leads uh, to the formations of volcanic mountain range, which is a component of the Pacific Rings of Fire along the west coastline as shown in the yellow line. Now we move into the third plate boundary type which is transform. So these boundary are characterized uh, by several key features. One is plate slide past each other. So at transform plate uh, boundaries, tectonic plates move horizontally uh, in op opposite uh, directions alongside each other. So this motion is called lateral or horizontal shearing. And then uh, number two, fault zones. Uh, and earthquake so transform uh, plate boundary are often associated with fault zone which is a large fractures uh, in the earth's crust so these fault zones are formed as a result of the plate uh, grinding against each other during the their, their lateral movement and earthquake due to the immense uh, pressure and frictions between uh, the plates earthquake are common along transform plate boundaries so the sudden release of stress energy accumulated along this fault uh, result in seismic activities. Uh, example is um, uh, San Andreas Fault. So San Andreas Fault in California is one of the most uh, famous transform uh, plate boundaries and uh, it marks the boundary between the Pacific plates on the west and the North American plates on the east in this picture below. So the motions along this fault is responsible for the frequent earthquake in these uh, regions. And we need to know that uh, the crust not created or destroyed uh, in this type of plate boundary. So unlike uh, other type of plate boundary like um, divergent boundaries uh, where new crust is formed uh, or, or, or convergence boundaries where crust uh, is destroyed because of the subductions, uh, transform plate boundaries do not uh, involve the creations or destructions of the earth crust. Uh, instead, uh, they are the area where the crust is neither produced nor destroyed as um, as, as, as the plates like push each other uh, horizontally. So overall, uh, transform plate boundaries are characterized by lateral movement of tectonic uh, plates, uh, fault zones, earthquake, and they play a crucial uh, role in the earth tectonic activity by uh, accommodating horizontal plate motion uh, without significantly uh, altering the earth crust compositions. 
So now let's revisit convergent plate boundaries as they can categorize into three types of convergence. Number one is oceanic continental convergence or known as OCC. And then we have uh, oceanic oceanic convergence also known as OOC. And the third one is continental continental convergence known as triple C. So we'll begin uh, by exploring the first type of convergence which is known as oceanic continental convergence or OCC for short. So uh, uh, subductions due to density difference. So this is quite common. The oceanic plate in this case Take one example, the Nazca plate in the red color region over here is denser than the continental plate which is uh, the South American plate. So because of this, the Nazca plate is being subducted under the continental part of uh, South America plate and creates mountain range called uh, Andes uh, or Andes mountain uh, along the west coast of uh, South American plate. Uh, earthquake and rapid uplift. Uh, the, the, the intense tectonic uh, forces associated with subduction zones create significant uh, stress along faults uh, in the uh, earth crust uh, and when this stress is released suddenly, it results in powerful earthquake. So this earthquake can be uh, destructive and also often uh, refers to as a mega thrust earthquake. So Additionally, as the uh, Nazca plate subduct, is called, it caused the continental uh, South American plate to be lifted uh, or uplifted. So this uplift can be uh, quite rapid with the land rising uh, by several meters in, in a short period of time. So this is another consequence of the tectonics uh, forces at work in this region particularly. So actually this case is similar case like what we have discussed or explained about the Sumatra plate and also the Pacific plate. So now we move into the next convergent type of plate boundary known as OOC which is oceanic oceanic convergent where oceanic oceanic convergent OCC occur when two oceanic plates come together at the convergent plate boundaries. <clears throat> So again, uh, subdivisions on one plate. So when two plates uh, converge, one of them is typically uh, subducted beneath the other. So this subduction process is driven by the difference in the density and buoyancy of the plate. So because of these two, uh, uh, it's between the two oceanic plates. So it's between which one is denser, that one will be uh, subducted beneath. Uh, and it will follow the density difference. So the decision of which uh, subducts is influenced by uh, actually their, 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 their formation age uh, and associated with the characteristics. So the older oceanic plate is uh, colder, denser and less buoyant due to its time span cooling at the ocean floor. So in contrast, the younger oceanic plate is hotter, less dense and more buoyant because it was recently formed by volcanic activities along mid-ocean ridge. As the result, uh, the older, colder uh, plate is more likely to be uh, subducted beneath the younger, uh, hotter plate. Uh, formation of trench. So during the subduction process, a deep uh, trench is formed on the ocean floor. So this trench is a long, narrow depressions, uh, depressions in the sea floor where the uh, descending uh, plate sinks into the mantles. So, like the Mariana Trench in the Pacific Ocean, which uh, reach at depth of approximately uh, 13 km is an example of a trench formed by the Oceanic Oceanic Convergent OOC. So, the Filipino Oceanic Plate, which is uh, older and denser, in the, it is subducted under the younger Pacific Oceanic Plate. And then, it's always associated with the uh, volcanic activities. So, subductions of the older denser plate into the mantle can lead into the melting of its crust. And this molten material called magma rise through the overlying plates leading to the volcanic activities. So, volcanoes often form in arc uh, and, or, or chains on the uh, overriding plates above the subduction zone. So these volcanic uh, islands are uh, characterized uh, features of uh, OOC. Uh, and then uh, example of oceanic oceanic convergence. 
uh, again the oceanic oceanic uh, convergence is responsible for the formation of um, earthquake change of islands and volcanic arcs in various parts of the world uh, for example uh, island change in the uh, southwest, uh, southwest pacific such as the solomon island in uh, vanuatu uh, the japanese archipelago and the Aulitian uh, island in, in, in Alaska. So in uh, triple C or continental continental convergence, the continental plates uh, do not subduct beneath each other. So when two continental plates converge, they are both uh, relatively buoyant and resist subduction uh, because they are composed of light, a lighter continental crust. Instead, of uh, being subducted, the collisions of continental plates leads to various geological processes such as uh, crustal buckling, uplifting and the formation of the uh, extensive uh, mountain range. Uh, one well-known example of continental continental convergence is the collisions between the Indian plates uh, <coughs> and the Eurasian plates on the north which has resulted the formations of uh, Himalayan mountain range uh, as shown in the red line. So in this case, the two continental plates have pushed again uh, to each other, causing the earth's crust uh, to deform and rise. So ultimately, uh, forming the highest continental mountain in the world, known as the Mount of Everest or Everest Mount. So uh, the formation of Titiwangsa uh, Mountain, also known as the Main Range in the Malay Peninsula, is a fascinating geological example of the another continental collisions. So the collisions uh, occur between uh, between two land masses known as uh, Sibumasu from Gondowana and Ismalaya from Indochina. And Sibumasu, uh, like I said, is one part of the Gondowana, Gondowana supercontinent and it is located to the west while Ismalaya Indochina was part of Laurasia and is situated uh, to the east. So the collision of these two uh, continental uh, terrains had a profound effect on the region. It led to uh, the closure of the ancient Paleothetis Ocean which once separated uh, these land masses. As the two continents uh, converged, the intense tectonic force resulted in the uplift uh, of the uh, the of the lands that creates uh, the uh, current or presence uh, presence of presence of uh, peninsula of Malaysia. So this diagram uh, illustrates the global distributions of plate boundaries and their associated uh, types. So convergence plate boundary in general are prominence in the vicinity of the Pacific Oceans uh, often refers to as uh, the ring of fire due to the presence of uh, extensive volcanic mountain range uh, along the boundaries. Uh, convergent plate boundaries are typically characterized by spike most of the time along the lines. So it indicates uh, the location of subduction zone where one tectonic plate is being pushed beneath the other. For instance, uh, the line with a spike pointing uh, eastward between the uh, Nazca plate and also uh, South America plate uh, signifies that uh, subductions of the Nazca plate beneath the South American plate. On the other hand, uh, divergence and transform uh, boundaries are mostly or uh, commonly found in the Atlantic Oceans and also the Southern, uh, southern uh, Ocean of uh, Antarctic. In general, plate tectonic is a fundamental geological process that shape uh, the Earth's surface but also uh, bring about natural disasters such as uh, earthquake, volcano, tsunami and other related events with potentially significant consequence for human populations living in uh, affected area. Uh, in addition uh, to plate tectonic which form volcanic mountain, there is another process called hotspot uh, that can give a rise uh, to volcanic mountains and create earthquake. Hotspot, uh, hotspots are not directly linked to uh, plate tectonic uh, as per se. To understand this concept more deeply, I encourage you to watch uh, the video, a video that I share in the ULEARN. Please watch them and we can further discuss this during uh, our upcoming physical class. 
So in summary, during this lecture, we have successfully met our goal of discussing key concepts including the layer of uh, the atmosphere, the earth's crust and plate boundaries. So I really encourage you to review this material as it will be relevant to the upcoming quiz. And with that, thank you very much for your kind attentions and have a nice day ahead.